You know, I can't believe it. I'm actually a little bit nervous doing this. Uh, I didn't know how to title this talk. As a sometimes journalist, I would find it really hard to give this a headline. It's very much like what uh, the previous speaker said about what the future will be like. But my question is around the idea of human agency. And human agency being, what can we do to do whatever we want to do? You see, that is human agency. The whole point of the enlightened, emancipated human being is that we want to have more choice. We want to be in better control of our lives. I started with that question, and I took the, I took the route that I'm somewhat familiar with, cinema. You look at this picture, you know what it is showing is the freeze frame of a movie released last year called Late Shift. What the movie is asking here is, at a certain point in the narrative, there's an on-screen prompt that is asking the audience to decide what this character should do. And people in the hall vote with their smartphones, which because they've downloaded an app, and by majority voting, the character decides what the audience wants, and so flows the movie. This is an interactive film. This is already upon us. It's called Late Shift. That's why I call it post-imagination, because this is not something we imagine will happen in the future. This is happening already. I don't like slides that much. I'll just go through the initial part with some slides to get to the point I want to make. This has been tried before. See, this idea of the audience being in control has been tried before. It's not as though it's a new idea. As early as 1992, uh, you know, director Bob Bajan made a film uh, called I'm Your Man, where the character named Jack will actually do what the audience wants to do. The, aud the audience gets a, you know, a pistol grip, like joystick kind of thing, with your seats, round armrest, and you choose green red and what are but yellow buttons uh, which come on the screen and Jack will do what you want to what him to do. Then in 1995, they made a movie called Mr. Payback. Both these are some 20 minute films, but there's a database of semiotics. What do I, what do I mean by that? The actors have performed all these things that you may want. They have, uh, so you have images, you have audio, you have, uh, um, you, you, you have music, you have sync sound, you have uh, Foley sound, all that has been added. That's a semiotic database, and that is about two hours long. The movie itself will be only about 20 minutes. You pick and choose, and the, you never watch the same movie twice. It's by audience voting. And even before that, there were these movie games, video games, you know, that had attempted all this in the mid and uh, late uh, 1980s. The story gets really interesting in 2007. See, this is a musician by the name of Yoni Block. You can Google him. In 2007, he was 28 years old. He broke up with his girlfriend. He's a pop rock singer from Israel. And he was so hurt and apparently a very gifted programmer himself. What he did was he released his third album the next year. In November 2008, and he attached a movie with it. And because he was a programmer, he made the movie an interactive video. What you see here is Yoni Block in his, in his or some Tel Aviv apartment. He's put on his headphones. <coughs> and when you watch this movie, if you download an app, what it will do for you is that when he's got headphones, he's singing the vocals for this. And he can pass the headphones to other people in the room or all around him. Whoever wears the headphones starts to sing. Now, if you have the app, you decide who in that hall will be the next person to wear the headphones. Now, what happens? 
when the headphone passes to a particular person, the visuals change, the story changes in the song, the vocals change, the lyrics change, the orchestration changes, the mood, even the context changes. It's a different song that you're watching. This is what he did. He got very excited with this, whatever impact it made. He decided to move to New York and take his software and try other experiments with it. He made a demo, which you can get on the internet. You can Google and get Bob Dylan's, you know, like a rolling stone. And if you have downloaded the app, you can pick which cartoon character, your, your neighbor, if you film that person, whoever you pick will sing the song. He did that as a demo. Then he got in touch with two gifted, somewhat eccentric and outrageous filmmakers who called themselves Daniels, Daniel Kwan and Daniel Schweinhardt of Los Angeles, because they had done some terrific work that had been showcased at Sundance. And he gave, him, gave them his software called Treehouse. He said, you know, do anything you want with it. He had already showed them some demos, like, you know, what you can, you go and sit in front of a video screen, and there's an actress, and there's coffee, and there's wine. You decide what she will drink. So people got excited, and they, they agreed, these two filmmakers. And they came, with, they came with three stories. They made a successful demo, and they came with three stories. I won't tell you the fir first two stories. And actually, I've not seen any of these films, because my point is not about the aesthetic value of these interactive films. They made a film about a couple breaking up. A boy and a girl are breaking up. They're having a conversation. And at certain points in the conversation, you can shift and go to the next possible ending. There are 16 alternative endings. You can choose any one of those at any point. So it doesn't mean you have 16 versions of the story. You have 16 end endings. There are many pathways to this. And they're having, they're having a conversation, and you pick, and the story, the conversation, conversation changes, and the plot line changes because of that. There's a good article in the New York Times, January 30th, called A Movie with a Thousand Plot Lines, with another question saying, you know, Will interactive cinema become the defining art of the, of the 21st century? Many of these leads I got from that. You can see how crazy this is. This movie called Possibilia was released in 2014. And although the movie is six minutes long, the number of pathways it has is that, can you read that number? I can't read that number. Can you see that? Starting from 3618, apparently it's more seconds than the beginning of the Big Bang. It's a six minute movie, and if you were watching this movie and you wanted to watch all the versions, it's not going to be possible in your lifetime. So maybe a movies will be made in the future in such a way that there's only one movie to watch all your life. It'll be your favorite movie, and you can keep watching it all the time. Supposing they had gone for a drink. Supposing she had accepted his offer. Like, you know, you can keep doing this, if. But you see, what I told you in the beginning, this is not the point of my story. What I'm trying to ask you is this. All this we are still talking about is implicit, explicit choosing, right? It's explicit interactivity. There are prompts on the screen, or there are prompts um, you know, on your smartphone, and you can choose. Maybe in the future you can even choose, you know, like, because there is, you know, there are these multiple plot lines will come with the ability of the machine also to do multiple, you know, faster graphics, and maybe you like this kind of pairing, you like this actor with that female lead in this language and dialect in that kind of setting, and the machine can process it. So you watch that movie with actors and even music. I want Ilya Raja on this. 
die hard with Eliya Raja. You can do whatever you like. And it is going to come like that for you. And you choose that, and it's the machine's ability to do it, but you are still choosing. But I'm talking about something else now. You know, the, you know there are screens that have iris scanners built into them. So I'm watching a movie, and a new character enters the room, and my eyes follow that character. And the machine realizes you're interested in this person and changes the plot subtly so that character leaps into more prominent life in the story. You don't know you have made the choice, but the machine knows you a little bit, just like your Google search knows you. I'm just doing typing Tom, and it's answering already. And it's different for different people because of what we've been asking. And these are smarter machines that know voice recognition, that know your, you know, your choosing patterns, that know how you are hiring things and firing things, that know when you're doing online shopping, how many times you reject, all that it knows and remembers. And it's trying to help you. When it's implicit interact interactivity, are you in control? We are talking about cloud processing, cloud services, cognitive computing, learning machines, robotics and artificial intelligence, driverless vehicles, Drones, you're sitting in your living room. Imagine this, the drone starts up. When you're talking to your friends and it starts to go out of the window and you're saying, where is this thing going? And you know, the refrigerator has told the drone, we're running out of eggs. Your voice pitches change when you're talking to your friend. When you argue like that, you probably have a glass of wine, and the drone has gone out to get this stuff. You've run out of your you know, tablets, and there are, you've got 20 in the strip. You've taken the 19th. It remembers it must replenish it. It is going out. It is not talking to anybody. It's only talking to other machines, which your machines are already doing, remember. It's going, going out there. It is picking the stuff, coming and putting it in your room. So the question is, what will you do? No. It is, make, it is deciding your agency. Now, this is a big problem, I'm saying. Because what seemed like control, it's no longer control. Actually, I'll leave you with this slide for the rest of the talk. What if the movie is watching you is the question. Think, think about this for a minute. We have talked about how our future consumer behavior will be. With all these great technologies that will come to our aid for marketing, for intelligent marketing, for big data analytics which will drive marketing, when you're talking all that, we are talking about a world where we need those products and services. Here I'm saying those products and services need you. They will choose how you will be. And you won't even know it. A machine will feed your prejudice. I don't like fair-skinned people. It will change the color and complexion of the, you know, of the characters there. You know, you get on your WhatsApp, you can get skin tone on it, right? <laughs> no, but that's explicit choosing. Now we will choose according to your prejudice. To be fair, we could call it preference, OK? <laughs> but this is what the machines of the future will do. And I am saying, we talked, about a, we talked about a world beyond certification. Actually, what does the end of globalization mean? It is a kind of increased personalization and customization. And the word custom is person in social context. There is no meaning to custom otherwise. The person in the commune is the custom. And the rise of the communal, I don't mean it in a negative idea, I mean commune as a virtual commune. Movies will be released to people like us. And there are many people like us. And the big fight in the future will be big capital trying to control how you think so that we all can think alike. Because what was the meaning of globalization? It meant 
big markets. To do big markets, big capital spent and promoted technologies we can, which can do mass production. If mass production must cater to big markets, goods must be standardized. If goods must be standardized, we must have common custom. You go to, you go to a hotel, breakfast happens, same breakfast, right? Smaller degree or bigger degree, like the, the basket is bigger or smaller, but we must all eat that cornflakes thing, or bread and scrambled eggs and you know, sliced ham or whatever it was, salads. Only if you could make this standards operate, we could do it. People got fed up, so Brexit happened. <laughs> Trump happened. <laughs> Something else is happening too. Because people are getting fed up, they're going past certification. I'll give you an example of certification. I don't want to dwell too much on it because, you know, I don't want to promote any product. But, you know, gurus in India are storming into a market that was driven by advertising. In the beginning, they didn't even advertise. And everybody got really hot and angry because this person is making products that multinationals were making. And he's making every kind of product. Tomorrow you should even have single malt. You should not be surprised. <laughs> Organic, healthy single malt. Good for your soul kind of thing. And, you know, because there was no standards, because this person has gone past certification and endorsement, he endorses his own product. I make this product. This is good for you. <laughs> and you see, that is happening everywhere. Presidents and prime ministers not talking to media, going directly to market. That has happened. But it's beyond rise of nationalism. And I'm saying... I'm confused because I'm not sure at the moment that all this is good for us. All this is good for us only if this happens. As an interactive specialist, you know, there are such people. Brian Moriarty said, implicit interactivity is something you should look at. You should become conscious and maybe deliberately change and shock the machine. Right? It puts on, you go sit, you're tired, suddenly that your favorite web, you know, web series is coming on, on TV. And you're saying, no, I don't want to watch this. I want to watch my family wedding video. You need to shock the machine so that you can beat it now. I'll say the last thing. This was actually shocking when it first happened, when Big Blue, IBM's computer, you know, beat the chess master, Time magazine said quantity became quality because it could process data at that rate. Said quantity became quality. Now what is going to happen is quality will only be quantity. And that danger we must overcome by becoming more aware so that we can exercise greater human agency. Thank you very much. <laughs>